All right, we did it. Um, let's see what that mob was. Out of curiosity. Break damage limit. I think he drops break damage limit stuff, which is like, what's the point? They have ultimate weapons, but still cool. All right, uh, I have a few funny little things to show, and then we will be officially done. Um, the first thing, while we're at the monster arena, I heard from a comment, I had never heard of this before, but I read it and I was like, I have to try that. Uh, Call Me Shaggy said that there's a soft lock with the tank it enemy. If you give an Aeon, Ronald, and Protect. Uh, the only problem is I don't know if we can do Ronald. Oh, nice, we can. Uh, hopefully he has enough defense, yeah. He also needs to be under half HP. I don't know how much HP this thing has. I could just smack it a few times, I guess. Because an uh, anima can do her own damage. Oh, I summoned the wrong thing. Ladies. Goodbye, ladies. Hello, slightly bigger lady. Problem is he's doing crits, so he might actually eventually kill me. He's getting a lot of crits. But yeah, there you go. So I had never known about this. This is probably not the only soft lock. I have to imagine there's probably I mean, uh maybe not. Like there's definitely some situations you can get into where you can't win, but you can just flee. But this I have no control over. It's completely soft locked. <laughs> Watch him whack me forever. So that's pretty cool. Runs out of what? It doesn't. There's no MP. There's no MP, and I heal more. And in this game, Protect and Ronald never run out. This is kind of a funny version of it because it looks like if. If you got really lucky and he got, like, a bunch of crits in a row, he might actually be able to kill me. <laughs> we kind of have a funny version of it here where it's like we have a dream that maybe he could kill us, but it probably never happened. Alright, see you guys back next week for Final Fantasy X. <laughs> we can't finish the Let's Play until this fight's over, so we'll see you back here for episodes 200. 
All right, so that was one thing. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show, I got multiple comments talking about cutscenes in the temples, which I don't know if I've ever seen these before. But apparently you can go back to the temples and there's cutscenes. And they're like story cutscenes. Here we go. So I'm I'm intrigued. I'm down to listen to Besaid for a bit. many super crazy ultimate monsters that were just taking a nice stroll through the woods. Yeah, I don't know if I'll do all of them. You can surely just look it up if you're really interested. In I'm curious to see what they're like. I kind of want to do Bahamut. I'm kind of curious what that one would be like. Is there one for Yojimbo? I bet you he's just like, give me some more money. <laughs> so Mr. Krabs pops up and he goes, I like money. That's the other reason why I don't want to do them all, because apparently I have to redo the puzzles. That's why I chose this one, because it's really quick. You don't have to do the Destruction Sphere. But... You know what would have been really awesome? I mean, I'm not blaming them for not doing it, because this game has enough post-game already. But it would have been cool if they, like, remixed the puzzles. different and then you get the the cutscene is like a little bonus for doing the harder version of the puzzle that's that's asking a lot given how much post game there already is that would have been kind of neat maybe on the remaster they could have done that people got stuck trying to figure out you could take that out of the door. It's like the hardest puzzle in the game right there. makes the Besaid Sphere look so cool because it's like the only one.
quickest and easiest puzzle, I say, as I walk around with the destruction sphere. Push, Titus. Use your manly arms. I like that now we don't care about Yevon, we just desecrate the temples, just walk right in. I don't care about your traditions. Stuff. Sin is cursed. Sin prays. It curses its form. It prays for dissolution. Sin sees dreams of its own destruction. Sin is looking at us. We live in a fading echo of time left us by the destroyer. Free him from you, Yevon. Free him. The faith that has become sin. I knew some of those words. Oh, look at all these chests! Wow. Some sweet stuff. The, the potion and the high potion, not so much, but the elixir, the... What was that? White magic sphere and the evasion sphere? Pretty sweet. So yeah, this that's that's cool. I am kind of tempted to go do all of them, but uh, we we've, we've been here long enough to grab some potions. Um. I'm not gonna do Bahamut because I have to do. Uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm curious as to what he says, but I'm not doing that freaking puzzle. Um. Oh wait, Bahamut. Yeah, you can't even do it all, can you? Never mind. Can you do Anima? She has something to say. And that one doesn't even have a. Puzzle. Does she even have a cutscene though? Cause she's like side things, so I don't know if that counts. Sister sounds cool too. Here we go. I think that was everything I wanted to show. I don't think there's anything else. Talk to the guy near the door. Hey, let us in. We want to check out the faith. Jim Bob. I wonder if you don't get Jim Bob until after Sin. If you, like, get him and then walk right back in and he has the cutscene right away. Same with Anima. She 
igazából. It'll be faster just to reset. Wait, I wonder how TBNs works. Because... Like, would the floor break again, or would you just walk through? Hers might be free. We're cap- She doesn't have an extra one. Is the other one I was gonna do? Yeet. Yeet. I need to listen to the Chocobo theme one more time. You gotta redo the bridge? But I ain't doing that. Just for her to make some cold jokes or something. Wait a second. Yeah, you would only have to do it on your way out, so you just reset. That's pretty annoying that they would do that to you. Like, just to get back to the game, you have to do the stupid puzzle. How's it going, Soulbeard? This temple is so cool. This temple looks like something out of Shadow of Colossus or something. It's totally just an optional area for no reason. Uh... Why couldn't we see to stop the dreaming? Three people we've already seen. Why did we stay on, Spira? We had forgotten for so long. We had forgotten to move forward. We had forgotten to change. Wow, that was kind of lame. No chests either. No defense sphere. Does Bahamut have one? On that list? The sisters are the treasure. True. This game and its camera angles. Bambalam? Does he sing Bambalam? This work. Just walk up to the guy. Hey, can we can we go talk to Bambalam? We go chat. That whole bit about Yuna being a tr I just can't believe. Okay, thanks. Can I go talk to Bambalam now? <laughs> One Bambalam, please. He sorrow said, and he's. What the that camera angle? Is this Resident Evil? Alright. We'll do TBN. We're ca oh, that's it. The server should be free.
Yeah, I never got Leviathan, so we can't check out his cutscene. Unfortunate. <laughs> we are literally finishing the playthrough by going to Macarena Temple. Isn't that fitting? <laughs> How fitting is that? It's meant to be. <laughs> Get your easy Mac. Mac or no temple. I had easy Mac yesterday. The next alert is a meme. I, I, there was a couple subs. I forget what that. What is this shiny thing? Oh, is that just the snow? here for that. <laughs> it took me a second to realize it was I'm hungry. I, for some reason I read it as is hungry. I was like, what? Dude, that's so obnoxious. Why do they do that to you? See more. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that if you miss the destruction sphere, but like, just let me step on the thing to reset it or something. What the? I didn't know you went down here. Oh, this is worth it just for this. That's really cool. And it sings the song outside. clothes than Chiva has. Should the dreaming end, you too will disappear. Fade into spirit sea, spirit sky. But do not weep, nor rise in anger. Even we were once human. That is why we must dream. The true TBN. Let us summon a sea in a new dream world. A new sea for you to swim. Is that... Is that referencing the final scene? Wait a second. Is that referencing the final scene? Where he, like, is swimming randomly? That's really interesting. That was cooler than I expected it to be. All right, one final thing. One finale. 
for the Final Fantasy X playthrough. And then we'll be officially done. I promised to show you, if I could find it, my old Blitzball save where I accidentally broke everything. As I do. And I did find it. So, uh, you can make Blitzball much more broken than this. You can, like, go around and get all the best players, make sure you win every single game, give them, just, like, pass the ball, score one goal, and then just pass the ball the rest of the game, and get to the point where, like, your whole team is leagues ahead of everyone else. But what's funny about this save is that it was on complete accident that this happened. Um, so what happened was I played the first game. I think I won the first game in Luca. Make sure this is the right save. It might be, might be one that's further down. The heck, what in the world is going on? Controller? Um... This is it. And we'll play the so why not? So I played the first game, and after the first game, Blappa was released by the Albed Sykes for some reason. And if you know anything about Blitzball, you know that the Albed Sykes are, like, leagues ahead of everyone else when you start Blitzball. I don't know why. I think it's because the first game you play, everyone gets experience. Like, the, the Albed game is played off-screen, so they kind of have to make them a bit stronger so that they keep up with the Aurochs and the Goers after that first game you play in the story. But they're, like, leagues ahead of everyone. Like, they're really strong. All of the Albed Sykes are for a while. Um, they're definitely the scariest team when you start doing Blitzball normally. Um, but for some reason, Blappa left after the first game. So I went and picked him up. And so my team is just the Aurochs, but with Blappa as mid, right? Well, Blappa is really strong when you first get him. So... Because Blappa was so strong, he was able to pretty much just solo the game. And because of that, he got a ton of experience. And so it just snowballed. And now, on complete accident, it's gotten to the point where Blappa is double everyone else's level. <laughs> and so... Uh, it kind of just never ends now. Every single game I play, he just gets all the experience and just continues to be so much better than everyone else. And so games kind of just go like this. Lapa swims forward. Lapa breaks to everyone. Lapa swims forward. Lapa breaks to everyone. And Lapa scores. How did you get in the way? Oh well, break to you too. And Blappa scores. And then, what usually ends up happening is the AI will go straight forward. They don't always. And half the time, Blappa gets the ball off this break, too. He only did one break. Oh, so close. But you'll see, they have to break to him because he has 30 blocks. <laughs> he could be the goalie. 
so they have to break to him, and a lot of times he ends up getting the ball just from that alone. So screw it up, Keepa. He has super goalie. Oh, bad super goalie roll. Oh, look at that. Blapa got the ball. Let's just see if we can break to their whole team. Oh, the one guy was sleeping. Half the time, I can just shoot from, like, here, and it's fine. Because I have 42 shot with Nap 2. Even if I miss, it puts him to sleep. And then I can just shoot from mid-court. But, uh, yeah, this is like... Not only can I get more than 10 goals a game, but it's like free to get 10 goals a game. <laughs> It's pretty wild. And like I said, it will just continue to snowball from here because he will get all the XP. Let's see if he gets it this time. But for some reason, he shot. Dotto has the ball. Quick. Get it out of his hands. Here you go, Blapo. Let's try to break the whole team. Never mind, half of them are sleeping. Let's see. Break you two and then shoot, see what happens. I don't know if I'll make it from this far. This guy has a special tackle, he might. Let's see. Probably not. Although I do have slip. I mean, if you're smart enough just to stop before the whole team gets to you. How did you miss that, Blapo? He's like, I've gotten three bad tackle rolls from him. Uh, if you're just smart enough to just kind of stop every time a defender gets to you and just break through that one defender, you'll never lose the ball. There we go. A drain tackle. I don't have any HP left. Is it gonna go in? <laughs> that makes me laugh every time. <laughs> when, when you score when the goalie's asleep. <laughs> Just the sound it makes cracks me up. Come on, Titus, you got this. Man, that's just the unluckiest tackles ever. Goalie is dead. I have Wedge on the team, too. I forgot about that. I kind of just got him because he's cool. I really don't need Super Goalie for this. Got it. Oh! Oh my god, they might score. Wait. Never mind, they have no time. He's gonna go for it. One second left left on the clock. He's gonna pass. Oh my god, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Nail biter. So yeah, so that's the enemy team. They got no experience. Oh, wait. None of us got experience. Oh, because it's an expedition. Okay. But, yeah. You saw they were all, like, 20, right? So, Blappa's level 47. He's more than double their level. And it's just going to get worse. <laughs> so, yeah. I wanted to show that off because, like I said, you can get Blitzball to be even more broken if you really, like, do it on purpose uh, and grab all the best players right off the bat. But it was just so funny to me that that I think this playthrough was um, like, I don't remember what this playthrough was. I don't remember if it was a challenge or if it was just one of my casual playthroughs.
but, um, you know, I, I did not intend on making Blitzball a big thing in this playthrough. Uh, yeah, no, this was just a regular playthrough. I had Waka with break HP limit. Super goalie. So yeah, I always thought that save was funny and I, I kept it for the memes. Um, I don't know if we can check. I don't know if the PS2 would say when the save is from. I don't think it does, does it? It's pretty old. Not like when I was a kid old, but... Maybe like college? Oh, Chaos Legion. Let's play that. We're gonna love that game. Uh, 2009. 2007. The Blitzball one is from 2009. The rest of these are from... Oh, that's from 2005. Oh my god. I was a baby. Bet you some of these are even older. 1999! <laughs> oh my god, I was seven. That's kind of wild. That's, that's save number six? We gotta see this. Wait, when did when did Final Fantasy X come out? I thought it came out in two thousand. Am I crazy? Yeah, what the heck? How does I know? <laughs> How is it from nineteen ninety nine? There's no way. My clock is broken. I traveled back in time. Well, that that is this one. That's the one we were just on. Literal Hacker Man. I'm sure it was close to that. It was probably like a year or two off. But this is close to when the game came out, probably. SOS Protect, Auto Haste, Auto Regen, Defense plus 10%. Yeah, this was not... I was a child when I made this save, I think. Seems... Seems weird. Death Proof, Berserk Proof, Confuse Ward, Auto Haze. Look, I even gave Kamari something. Break HP limit. I had Alchemy on Riku. 1 MP cost. Sensor? What's going on? <laughs> Here's the here's the real here's the real question. Titus board, Orin board, Uniboard, Waka board, Riku board, Riku. I did like nothing with Riku. Lulu board. Why is everyone over there? And then where's Kamari? Okay, I actually did some stuff with Kamari. Went down what, Orins? Is this Orins? No, this is Titus's. I went down Titus's with Kamari. But I... Certainly I did not have the, everything done yet, did I? I had all the Albed premieres, though. Oh, man. <laughs> I could look back at old saves all day. Maybe we will sometime. I still have a bunch of old Final Fantasy VII saves. One of which was uh, very funny to look back on. I found an old Final Fantasy VII save a couple weeks ago, and I don't know what the heck I was doing with my materia. Oh, my God. I Like, who... 
I was blown away at the materia choices I made. <laughs> well, anyways, that is going to be it for Let's Play Final Fantasy X. Um, a few closing remarks. Uh, I want to thank everyone for going on this journey with me. This is my my third favorite game of all time. It has been my second favorite game of all time pretty much my whole childhood. Um, so this game means a lot to me. And I hope that the playthrough of the story, um, I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that if you like Final Fantasy X, you got more out of it. I hope that if you don't like Final Fantasy X or you're not were never interested in 10 that you got something out of it and maybe got some um, desire to play it or just enjoyed the story. Uh, it was an amazing experience to just like gush about this story for a couple weeks. <laughs> like every Friday for what two months just gush about this story because I truly do, do love the story in this game um, and just the world building and everything. So I'm glad I was able to just kind of talk about it every day for a while, or every Friday for a while. And uh, I'm glad we got to do the entire post game. I know it took a bit longer than some of you wanted, but I certainly don't mind it. I love uh, Fantathon, and I don't want it to end any earlier than it needs to. So I definitely don't mind going a couple extra episodes and just enjoying the post game and it really does show how much work they put into the post game in this game they certainly didn't have to remember this is the first ps2 game so if you think about crash bandicoot or spyro or a lot of the final fantasy or final fantasy a lot of the sony ips that moved from ps1 to ps2 all of the companies were like let's just get a ps2 game out like let's just make it look good and they had to, to tear back a lot of the other stuff. The games were usually shorter, they had less content, but they looked good. And that's kind of the way a lot of the PS2 games were for the very beginning of the PS2 lifespan. Um, you know, especially Crash and Spyro are the two I always point at. It's like they took out so much just to make it a PS2 game. Um, but here, Square Enix did the opposite. They made it look good, but they added so much more to it as well. Um, so that's what really impresses me, is that they didn't cut corners just to make it a good-looking PS2 game and get it on the shelves while the PS2 was still hot. They uh, they made this a great game. They put everything they possibly could into it, and then, for the international version, they put even more into it. So the amount of investment they had in this game, I mean... If you want to talk about games nowadays where they just kind of release it half-baked so that it'll make its money, this is the opposite of that. If I were to pick the the one game that I feel like they put the most effort into to be a good game, I think it's Final Fantasy X. Because all the other companies around them were just pushing to the shelves because the PS2 was hot, you know. And this is like the exact opposite. They put so much love and care into this game. You can even tell, like, there's still stuff about it I'm learning. Like, the cutscenes in the the Faith Chambers, like, that just blows my mind. The amount of detail they put in is just wild. Um, so, that's why it's my third favorite game. That and just the world building and and kind of everything about this game. And, and not only that, but it got me into challenge running. Um... You know, I think my very first challenge run was a Final Fantasy VII challenge run. Um, and Final Fantasy VII is definitely the game that I've challenge run the most. But I still think Final Fantasy X was the game to get me into it. Because my challenge run of Final Fantasy VII was alright. I did an IW challenge, it was pretty easy, it was just kind of like getting my feet wet. But then I did NSG in this, and man, it got me hooked on challenge runs. I did NSG, and then I immediately did NSG and SNO right after, um, and I was hooked. I was reading game facts every day in college while I was waiting for the class to start. I was sitting there reading game facts and just reading about challenge runs and planning out my own challenge runs. And so this game lit a fire under what would become, like, basically my career, <laughs> you know, because I still challenge run to this day, so... Um, so yeah, this, this game just means a lot to me. And it was really great to have you all along for the ride. So thank you. And now, 
for Fantathon Business, we are moving on to our first bonus game. So up to this point, we have just done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so now it is time to do our first bonus game. The first time we're going off, not off the schedule, but off the main path. And uh, going to be doing a bonus, bonus game. We're going to be doing 10-2. And I'll talk more about 10-2 later this has gone on long enough we'll talk about 10 2 when we get there so i want to thank you again for watching let's play final fantasy 10 and fantathon in general we will see you in final fantasy 10 2 yuna's magical dress up adventure we'll see you there peace